Powered by Riverside. Jimmy Jams. Mm-hmm. We got How a special we guest. We do. Ladies and gentlemen, people of all ages, stages, and dialects. The very famous, very impressive, very popular, and very lovely Deputy Addie Perez is in the building. <laughs> Let's go. I can't believe it. You know, like a dream come true. Oh, wow. They love it. They're going crazy. Listen to that. They love it, Jim. They love it. You got the extra long claps. I know, right? <laughs> Cut it off. Yeah, the guys barely got anything. What was that all about? Oh, hey, you man. know? You come around and everybody's cheering like crazy. I so what's up, buddy? Favoritism. What's up? How are ya? Excellent. How you doing? Finally, get to get a part of your podcast. Yeah, so famous. Yeah, finally, they remembered me. Oh, so <laughs> famous. Here right. we go. Right, like four people who watched Look. it last week. I don't know what you're uh, talking about. The uh, thing I do know in Spanish, un poquito. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll be honest with you. Can I just tell the truth right here? Go for it. I didn't think she'd actually do it because she's so busy. I mean, we talked about it and I was like, yeah. maybe, maybe she'll respond, maybe she won't. Of course I will. Why wouldn't I respond? I have time, always have time for my brothers and sisters. Are you crazy? Always. I, I appreciate that. We really do. We really do. We get it though. Busy schedules. You got to squeeze a little bit of time for yourself and podcast is like a distant second. It's a, it, I, I got time. We all got time. Thank you. Well, yeah, we definitely appreciate it. I know that, um, you know, hopefully, I'm not sure if you did, but hopefully you, you got a chance to check out maybe Braylon's or Bryce's and kind of see how this flows. But we're going to keep it extremely simple because we know that your time is very valuable. People say that time is money. I don't think time is money. What do you think about that? I guess it depends. If you're a business person. <laughs> Jim? I mean, I'm always broke, so. <laughs> I, must be, I must always be out of time. I don't know. <laughs> I, got well, I got a different viewpoint on it. You know, if you, if you if you die, you're out of time. You still have a bunch of money left, but, right? But if you got all the money in the world, can't buy you more time, can it? When you're in your deathbed, it's like, eh, well, no, it's, it's tw- 2024. You put yourself in a frozen chamber and freeze yourself and wake up 100 <laughs> years later. I mean... Give you some more time. <laughs> you, you must think we have uh, money down here in Florida. We we do not. I, can assure I definitely. You that. I know Florida. Florida make you broke. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a little bit overrated too. I'll, I'll say that. I heard congested. It's very congested. Yeah, but Daytona now. Come on, Jim. Tell her it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. No, it's all right. He sighed, and that's it for me. When you sigh at the beginning of that, we're done. <laughs> Conversation over, done. You already know. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's kind of like um, we were talking to um, Devontae Carr last mm-hmm. a week, two weeks ago, whatever it was, and he was talking about the influx of people coming into, um, you know, their county, and we were like, yeah, it sounds like Daytona. It's just mm-hmm. constantly building apartment complexes, and where are all the jobs? I, I don't know where all the jobs are for these people. Maybe they're traveling to, to Richland to work and coming back. I don't know. Commuting. I know. A lot of people from Florida are starting to go into Georgia and South Carolina and North Carolina. So I guess that's where they're going because honestly, that's where we're getting now. So a lot of people who can't move into Florida are coming straight to us now. Right. You guys can have it. <laughs> are you leaving? Oh, okay. I thought you said we can have it. Not sure. <laughs> no, they can have the, the influx of people. Oh, oh, so yeah. oh, we got too much. 
Yeah, you can like that one. Um, so here's what I'll say to you. Okay, we're gonna keep this very, 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 very plain. There are some questions we have, um, and then there's just a conversation we want to have. I, I think how we normally start it off is it's been a tradition. We 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 want to tell the people who Addie Perez is, right? So if you were jumping in an elevator with somebody going to the 60th floor, you had you know your elevator spiel. What would you tell the president of the United States or your role model? If they asked you, well, who are you? What would Addie say? I'm a crazy Puerto Rican from the Bronx and just in South Carolina. South Carolina. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the I mean, truth. I'm crazy, but don't worry about nice. It's okay. <laughs> I'll be mean, honest. Um, you know what? Um, who's Addie Perez? Is I'm probably a selfless service type of person, um, very dedicated, very hardworking individual who just wants simple things in life, um, who just wants to see everybody happy the best way they can. Um, and if I can provide that happiness, hopefully I can do that as well. Um, being from the Bronx, born and raised in the Bronx of New York, the Bronx. Um, and then boogie when, down. yeah, boogie down, you know, nothing like no other. Um, <laughs> But when uh, I decided to join the army, decided to move down and decided to try the Southern life and being in South Carolina for the last 10 years or so has been a good change for me. So for me, it's just a person who just like to help people out and, you know, with whatever they need and just, just enjoying life the way it is. So. Okay. Well spoken. Mm -hmm. Well spoken. Enjoying life the way it is. It's just like, here we go. I like yeah. it. I guess some people find it boring, but I guess after some time and when you go through life and you go through things, um, go through people and families and things like that and tragedies and whatever else, you just kind of want to have a calm life and just enjoy, with, especially with the craziness that's going around us in 2024 mm -hmm. um, and being a mom and things like that. It's just kind of like, as long as my space is great and I feel comfortable and happy, I'm not, I can't ask for any more than that, you know. Jim. So, Bronx to the South. How was that transition? Great. Um, it's kind of sad. The reason why I came down here, but a, an accomplishment as well. Um, when I uh, had some things going on in Europe that was a disaster, that led me to actually have a job in South Carolina as a drill sergeant leader at the Drill Sergeant Academy for the Army. Um, so good timing and it was kind of a spur of the moment where I just packed my stuff and left. And when I did, it was to start working here as a DSL for sure is what we like to call it. And when I got the opportunity to move from the Bronx to here, I just decided that it would be stupid to go back. You know, when you have a, when they take you out of that environment and put you in this environment, it's like, why would I go back? You know, there's nothing up there really, you know, there's no progression to me. Um, quality of life is better down here. So I ended up staying um, and decided to keep it moving here. And so I met Sheriff Lott. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then? So when I was a drill sergeant for the three years there, um, they didn't realize that the sergeant major at the time and the sheriff are best friends. And the sergeant major was my mentor and I had no clue what to do after cutting out of uh, the drill sergeant stuff and i was reserved in the army but i was always on orders the sheriff heard that you know about me whatever and I convinced and i could pretty much got convinced to come down try the uh the exam try the hiring process and it was actually i was supposed to be a state trooper yeah! um hmm. that was my first choice was state trooper because of the structure so you know campaign hat structure, discipline in my eyes at the time was like, I'm going to be a state trooper. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, I went through both hiring boards and I didn't really care where I went at the time because to me it was the same in a way, but not really. I said, listen, whoever hires me, I I'll go wherever. Right? It doesn't matter to me. And when Richard County heard that, they were like hired. And that was it for me. <laughs> so and then the epic seven years later it was Richard County. And uh, that's where I've been. Wow, uh, quite the journey. 
So how badass is it being a drill sergeant instructor? I mean, that just sounds awesome. I always see those yeah. guys. I'm always like, don't mess with those guys or right. girls because I've never seen a female drill sergeant instructor, but that sounds amazing. There's a whole bunch of females drill sergeant. We're like the best ones. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, um, that's freaking amazing, honestly. It is a honor uh, to be, now there's the drill sergeants and then drill sergeant leaders, right? The drill sergeants are the ones that train, the basic training for uh civilians to, to soldiers and privates you know and then when the drill sergeant leaders are the ones that instruct the ncos and non-commissioned officers of the army and we train those sergeants into drill sergeants is what we do um so that was the most an honor to a position i've ever done and i miss it and i would go back if i could um so it was a great experience to be able to train our ncos and our future leaders into these drill sergeants for our civilian so you know civilians turning into soldiers um, and, and it was a great honor. A lot of people feared us because we were the standard, uh, because we knew, you know, policies, we knew, um, you know, uniforms, we knew the cadences, we knew, you know, APFT, the PT stuff, we knew a verbatim and we used to basically pitch verbatim the modules for each movement, you know, how to salute, how to do a left face, right face, you name it. We were memorizing each module and pitching them to all our candidates at the time. So it was definitely a good experience for me. That's wild. That's yeah. that is absolutely unbelievable. I would have never, ever guessed that. No. That you you were training, mm -hmm. like you said, the peop the non-commissioned and then you said NCOs. Yeah, so they're basically sergeants and stuff of the army are right. getting trained to be drill sergeants. To be so drill that's sergeants. Mm -hmm. So you're a step above the drill sergeant. You train the drill sergeant. Yes, that's what we did. God, oh, yeah. A lot of people don't realize what I've done in the past, and I'm no. not saying I'm, I'm like amazing. This is just something that when I joined the army, um, I, I actually was trying to do college first. You know, like hey, let me do the college thing. You know, and I was trying to avoid the army. I was trying to avoid being a cop. And the reason being is because it's a family tradition of mine to be like in the military in the cop because my dad's in the military, my dad's a cop, my uncle's a cop. A cop. It's like everybody in the family was law enforcement and you know in the military. So I was trying to go the opposite. I was like, listen, I'm gonna try to be the typical college kid and just go in and do what I gotta do. And I was supposed to be a veterinarian. I was not supposed to be doing what I'm doing now. I'm not saying I don't love it, right? Because I started to realize you're built to do things. And that's what it led to like, you know what? The universe just told me that you was built to do this, not to do this. And it just kept snowballing and this is where I'm at. And I've enjoyed every bit of it. You know, I can't say I regret it. It was the, it's just guided me into that direction and did what I got to do. No complaints necessary, you know? Dude, when I say dude, I'm talking about Jim. I know, <laughs> I know. Bro, you didn't tell me, cause he does the research, right? All right, full disclosure, he does some research. I knew you were in the army, I didn't know any of that. I'm sure he didn't either. But by, by look on your face, he <laughs> like you knew it either. I and then he, here we are. Yeah, look, I actually can show you. Um, so this is actually the jewel siren belt I wore. Holy um, crap, get, get a little closer. Is yeah, it? see. I guess oh, got I, saw, I saw it zoom in one second. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a belt. It's so crest. this is so this the is the drill, this is the drill sergeant belt that basically mm -hmm. um that drill sergeant wear. Mm -hmm. And I know um you you know DIs in our uh, Marines do it different because they all wear this belt. But for us as drill sergeant leader, this is an identification of what we wore in uniform over our blouse to identify that we were the drill sergeant leaders of the academy. So and this is the crest of the drill sergeant. I know it's hard to see because it's blurry because I've got it all whatever but, but no, you know. you're good you're good man mm -hmm. man congratulations awesome. on that yeah. i want to apologize to you for something else too can i apologize for this jim should i do this Go ahead. looking at her name on the screen and there's we're going to get into this in a second if you want to but i see the md master oh. deputy yeah that's nothing no, okay. All right. Maybe no, talk about it later. Or we don't have it's to. Okay. So, it's so, no, no, it's, it's okay. So, um, it's Matt MD is master deputy. It's the same mm -hmm. as Braylon. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it would have changed, but of course, um, when I announced that I was leaving, mm -hmm. I, I did leave, you know, in that time. And I was ending my time as a deputy. 
-hmm. And so I ended up transitioning to a new occupation, right? I was supposed to move to Texas and that me and my husband agreed, which mind you, we are not divorced because everybody's rumoring that we divorced, that we did like, uh, we have a bad marriage or no, we did not. We are still happily married. Um, we just had any, some, Addy. I didn't hear this, any rumors. Yeah. Hear... Uh, listen, social media has been going to it's the internet. Yeah, it's, it's so bad. So me and my husband are still married. We've been together for 12 years. We've been married for five. Nice. Um, our child is our first child together. We only have one right now, which is about to be five. Nice. And um, so we had made a family decision that because when I got the new job, he also got the new job as well. And it has to be to be in Texas. Um, but we agreed it was best for me to stay here because of where we live and things with the family while he works on what's over there. It was, I don't like Dallas. I'm sorry. I did not like it. <laughs> I was what? like, I was like, let me have an open mind and go over there and like, check it out. Hell, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> she almost gave it to us. She mm -hmm. The like, Bronx is coming I mean, out. I'm sorry. I, I just did not like it. And we just made a decision that it was best to stay here so that I can, you know, do the thing here. And then it was easier to come back to the sheriff's department. Um, I'm not full time. I am part time. A lot of people thought I came back full time. I don't. I'm actually working two jobs. So I'm working my full time job, which is the job that I applied to, which I've been working for the past year and a half now. And then I work part time with the sheriff's department. So when I'm home and when I can, I will work with the sheriff's department. Um, then. So that's the, something that a lot of people did not understand what was going on with me. So when I'm a part timer, I cannot get promoted. Mm -hmm. So I have to be as a master deputy. So that's why it's kind of a standstill for me as a master deputy after being so long with the sheriff's department. It's just it's one of the things that I had to, which is not a big deal because it doesn't change the way I work or anything like that. So it's just, that's why it's still empty. <laughs> right, right. So Jim, uh, yeah, you're probably going to ask this. So I'll ask her. So go for it. Are you saying you have two homes? You go back and forth, Texas, South Carolina. So yes. So we do have two homes and because my current occupation is a remote job. Perfect. That's so what I heard. I, I did hear yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm not going to say who I work for because right. not everybody needs to know everything. Just like Bryce said, yep. I did listen to what she said. It's just not everybody doesn't need to know everything. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I can say is that the occupation that I'm working in now is does help with the community and law enforcement. So I still work with law enforcement in helping suppress crime in a community. So I'm so involved in that fashion. Um, so it's a great transition for me, but I am a remote traveler. <laughs> Jimmy, do you know what her job is? Don't say it, do you know what I, I don't, when I was looking no. though, when I was doing my research, mm -hmm. I saw that the Texas thing, I was like, there's this strange gap that nobody could seem to fill in. And I was like, I'm just gonna start off from Richland, not, that's, I'm not going backwards unless she wants to talk about yeah. it. So I was, I wasn't trying to fill in the gaps myself. No. I was like, I'm not even going to bring it up because right. who knows, it could be something really personal. So I was like, we're just going to start from where she is now and let her work her way backwards. Oh, no. So it's not, um, you're not going to know exactly unless you work with me and I've mentioned it or, you know, things like that. So it's not something, and like I said, it's not something crazy. It's just no, that no, it's, yeah, no. you know. I, I, it's just a job. I do work from home and I do travel to different locations to assist the community and the law enforcement. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, and it's been great um, to be able to do that and do both at the same time. The sheriff gave me the opportunity to come back part time with the sheriff's department um, to be involved as much as I can. So, I'm going to say this and we're going to change, we're going to transition to something else. I found out because the company came to Daytona and did a presentation. I think. Um, that was the rumor. Rumor has it. And so I started talking to some people there and they were like, I think so. And I was like, hmm. So anyway, um, I hope so. yeah, yeah, it's a possibility. You're still kicking it up. Budgetary yeah. restrictions. You know how that goes. I'm gonna go, I, I know. I'm going to go over there then. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I got it. <laughs> so speaking of, okay, I don't know if you even want to mention this because I can edit this part out, but what a surprise when he he walks up to me and says so you're interviewing my cousin he walks up to me and he looks up at me because he's tiny he's like you're interviewing, you're interviewing <laughs> wow i was like i was like who's your cousin little man <laughs> so let me tell you i'm gonna tell you how that happened right because i didn't even know 
Okay. So I'm I'm driving back from New, Jer- uh, from New Jersey, you know, because I was visiting family, and mm-hmm. I'm just and I, you know you put background, so I had reruns, and you were on it, and for some reason I was on it. It was a rerun that we were on at the time, and yeah. I'm listening. I hear this voice, and I'm like, "Go on, that's that sounds that sounds like somebody I know." <laughs> Man, when I took a glimpse, I was like, "What the hell are you doing there?" And it's him. <laughs> On this guy, and I text, I, I like text him. I was like, "When were you gonna tell me you were on the show?" He's like, "Oh, I was just keeping it a secret." I said, "So I got to watch a rerun, <laughs> and so thank them, I was on the show at the same time you was on the show, and it was you running the whole time, and I'm in the background while they're freaking talking. I'm in the background while yeah. he's chasing." <laughs> <laughs> well, how, wait a second. You told me <laughs> how the relation is. Yeah. How come? Somebody else didn't tell you. Hey, he didn't know either. Number. What? He didn't know either. No. Whoa, and you know what's crazy? Small world. It's like I almost forgot that he was in Daytona, and it didn't mm-hmm. click to me about you guys. I'm gonna be yeah. honest. I'm like, yeah. it ain't. You know, sometimes oh, it's just. And I'm like, oh, no wonder. And that's why. I, yeah. So I had to text him, and he said he was keeping it a secret, and it happened to be when I, when I see him by accident. I thought that was funny. Jimmy, so, that's great. He's, he's trying to keep being on national television a secret. How, how do you do that? <laughs> You keep it ain't secret. happening. No, it was great to see him though. Like you know, it's always. Let me tell you something. As I guess, as long as been, I've been doing this, right? Because I've been on for a long time for the previous things. I guess we can't really say much about it, but being on for so long, and you know, and everybody's like, oh, like I don't take it to like up here. You know, to me, I'm on it. I was given an opportunity to be on the show, and it's a great experience. Is what I tell everybody. Listen. I get it, but it's a great experience when you grow old and gray and you look back and you can be like, that was me, you jump on the fence and I was grabbing yeah. somebody, blah, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a great experience and yeah. being able to see other people and other family members or, or something is such an accomplishment and I'm so happy to see him on it. Like, I'm so happy to see you on it. Like, I'm always happy to see others progressing and showing the world what we can do, you know, as, as a as just a person, a female, or this, or that, or whatever it is, I always applaud everybody on there to be giving a hundred percent and doing what you got and showing the world what we got. I, I really do. So it's awesome. Because my time is gonna end, you know. Like I'm not gonna be on it forever. I mean, I mean, I left and I came back, but I mean, eventually my time will end, and it was just to see the see it going is is such a great accomplishment, a great joy to see. You know, I really do love that. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff for sure. Yeah, it's funny because you say that because <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting any younger. I feel <laughs> like I'm such a poor representation of law enforcement sometimes oh, because no. you know I'm slick out the mouth. I'm a little disrespectful at times, you know. But you have an excuse. New York is your excuse. <laughs> you know, Florida. We're supposed to be country people. We're supposed to be uh, Southern hospitality down here. Yeah, but we're human, right? We're supposed to be a transparent because at the end of the day, we came from the streets. We came from that living situation. Right. So why be fake about it? I mean, we're gonna have a twang. We're gonna have a slang. We're gonna have, we're gonna curse here and there once in a while. We're gonna catch an attitude, unfortunately, until we catch ourselves. Like, that's just normal. That is the whole purpose to be as transparent as much as possible to yeah. show who we are because if we don't show who we are, they're just gonna think we're freaking robots and that's, you know, that's not it. So people appreciate you and people love you. They really do. And, and I see the comments and I just kind of go through it and they love you. They love how you interact, even though if you didn't know what the optometrist or whatever. <laughs> there, it the stuff, there it I'm is. I'm bringing the bold stuff. There it is. You know, you know, it's funny. Like, I haven't been watching as much, but I watched that and I was cracking up. And then you happen to post it, which is amazing. But it's just, it happens, right? I you got to keep the discourse going. Addie, if you watch that clip, Inside information here, okay? Lean in. We're gonna break some news here, Eddie. Just we'll whisper it. We don't want everybody to hear it. Jim, Jim, lean in just a little bit. If you watch that clip, there's a black car that flies behind me when I'm talking about the optometrist, optician. There's a yep. go back and watch it. Why? And uh, it was Jimmy. It was Jimmy. <laughs> He's come zooming by my traffic stop with his souped up vehicle. And, I'm, and I said, this guy. And he's and like, I, this guy. Ah. And I was like, this guy, right on camera. And they, I was like, oh, they show everything. My wife is like, I can't believe 
My wife is hanging out the window screaming, Silver, Silver Fox! Fox. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he was like, this mother. <laughs> <laughs> like, this guy. It was, it's crazy out here in Daytona. You know, you can find us. They don't, people don't think it's live. There it was. it was. I mean, they do the same thing to us. Richmond County is only so big, you know, and we, we tend to go through the, the same major areas and we've been on for so long. Like, who doesn't know us? They, they memorize what the cars look like. They memorize, yes. you know, everybody. It's just normal, yes. you know? So it's either good or bad. So, <laughs> good. Speaking of mm -hmm. nice black cars, how'd you get that Camaro? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it anymore. Well, I figured you didn't have any more since you're. So I'll tell you. I'll tell you the story. Um, so when I came to Richmond County, I really want. You know, everybody has this thing. They want to be on K9, right? Yeah. You know how it goes. Everybody. So the reason why I wanted to be on K9 is because, like I mentioned, I wanted to be a veterinarian, right? My job mm -hmm. in the army was a veterinary technician. So when I joined the army, and a year, and so this was 2008. And, and so as when I joined and um, when I was a year in, I was going to school to be a veterinarian for my undergrad, whatever, I was trying to go through that process. When I stepped out of my last semester, I got the phone call from my unit and they're like, hey, you're going to Kuwait. I'm like, uh, okay. And then I hang up and five minutes later, they call me back and they're like, um, sorry, it's a mistake. You're going to Afghanistan. Mm. Pack your shit. You're going to leave in a month. Okay, so I ended up being a veterinary technician to a backfill unit. So I filled in a slot in the Alabama unit that deployed to Afghanistan. Um, and I was one of the few, I think there were seven or eight of us that were technicians to actually serve the military working dogs overseas. Mm -hmm. So I worked on emergency trauma for military working dogs overseas, for Marines, Air Force, Army, who, Navy, Coast Guard, whoever had a, uh, an animal bomb. You know, whatever military work on sniff dogs, whatever it was, is what we worked on while we was overseas for that year. Um, so I got one hell of experience, all of us did, on that year, whoever else was out there. And so when I came back, I was still in the mode of the military working dog because of what they did. I had, mm -hmm. again, things happen for a reason. And it was redirected for me to go to the cat team, which is the Camaros, right? Um, so I think a year and some change into law enforcement i got into the cat team because it was easier just like with danny brown and uh, garrow at the time and all those old heads like donnie campbell uh mulcahy and everything all these old people that we had at the time um to go onto the cat team and so i was on the cat team um for the six years <clears throat> um patrol and so i've had the camaro for that long, for for so I was very sad when I gave it up because you know when you you I mean it's a car but you you know you chases and you know you kind of just blend in with the car you know and um, and they had the Camaro they're actually transitioning to a different car now I believe I, I don't really need one uh, because of the situation would it be nice cool um, my driving's better in a sport vehicle than it is in a SUV. Um, <laughs> Lower to the ground. Hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it all, it's all good, but that's how I had to come out. So I was sad when I let it go. I gave it to Braylon so that he can take it away, but he didn't end up staying with my car. Um, ended up going to somebody else that took the place of the cat team on that. So gotcha. it was fun. I went hell, hell of a chase on that one. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, ha you have some very memorable moments. Uh, and can we take a look at something? Here we go. That's way Bolting to the fence. Um, I dropped also, whatever I had in my hand on, and I caught him mid Look at that butt. So I just hog tied, you know, pretty much hog tied his legs crisscrossed so that he wouldn't move anymore. I held onto the fence. I'm only about what 125 is, pounds. What a so thug. Was like, oh, 125? Damn. Well, look oh, at yeah. you. Military. As long as you meet the standard. Look at you. That was a very emotional. Uh, so I was actually crying. Really? Um, yeah, and the reason why is because they had brought up something um, with the homeless guy way back in the day, um, and it was it was so raw for me for that moment, and I kind of got emotional and with deployments and things, you know, just a whole bunch of things. It was a very long time ago. Um, that that episode there from the, I don't want to say the name, but back in the day, right? That was my first time, like one of the first times I was with Marcel Ariano, and he okay. was not sure if I was able to handle myself at the time. Yeah. 
Yeah. And mind you, this is that time of that video was within my first year, year and a half wow. of working law enforcement. So I was still new to it. And okay. um, I, I never forget what, sh uh, what they said at the studio. Like, that's like the fastest chase, as fastest capture we've ever seen. There um, it is. Yeah, is what, what I remember uh, Six had mentioned, like, at the time, you know, it was interesting. And I, he was fidgety, you know, you see the body language, and, you know, I was in great shape at the time, too, you know. I was, <laughs> I was, I was like this, you know. Um, he was on it. Mm -hmm. I was on it, and I saw him move, and I just got, Bloop! man, that was probably the best time right there. To prove a point, you know, that as a as a female, I was able to handle myself. I was able to help out my partner. I was able to communicate with him and try to get him down or whatever it is. It, it, it was a good plus yeah. um, that event happening safely, you know, because it could have gone so many different ways. But um, Mark Ellery and I was like, you're okay in my book after that. He's like, I'll, I'll patrol with you anytime after that. Nice. He was really tough. Nice. So, very nice. tough. Yeah, we're digging around looking for some stuff, Jim. Yeah. What'd, you, mm -hmm. what'd you find? It's hard. It's hard to dig up some stuff now. It really is. Yeah? yeah you can so? find some stuff. We can find yeah. some stuff. Did you know you can find stuff on Pinterest about you? Uh, I guess. It depends what so it is. So random. It really is. <laughs> I don't I don't share too much. You know, I don't really post a lot. I don't share my social medias are private. I, I don't even share who I'm married to. Um, I stopped sharing my son also. It's just out of the just the way things have been changing. It's been different, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I completely get that. Yeah. You. you know what I love about your you guys? You're always having fun on the social media. That you guys are always you know hanging out and doing stuff with pictures, and I, I love seeing everybody smiling and just hanging out like one big family. Obviously, but you know it's all on social media, so everybody's you know doing their thing. I like that. Yeah, yeah, you know, like like Bryce mentioned, the PIO does a really good job, um, a lot more now, uh, of, with social media and how that stuff works and stuff like that. They do a really good job with everything. Um, and everybody likes their job, honestly. It's really good to work in Richmond County. A lot of people actually quit other jobs or come from New York or New Jersey and actually work for us just because of the environment. Um, now, mind you, it's always going to be a, a, a downfall in a, you know, a place that you work. is always going to be something you don't like or whatever. But at the sure. end of the day, people actually enjoy what they do. Um, and people get along with whoever they get along. They've got their friends. They've got their group, you know, and stuff like that. It's not completely miserable if you want to say it like that. So, <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it. I've never, me leaving was not because I hated my job. It was just me leaving to progress in my family. Um, and to make that choice, but everybody does like what they do, you know, things happen. And if you don't like it, then you move on to the next thing. You know, it's not, you're not forcing, we're not forcing you to stay, you know, and, and you have the ability to do what you want to do if you see it fits for you, you know? It, but, it looks to me as though you all get along with each other, right? <laughs> I, go, I go to the studio, just like you've been. Mm -hmm. I'm watching, I'm listening, I hear things, blah, 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 blah. Do you hang out with anybody like outside of work? In law enforcement from richland or no yeah when i was um still in we did we um we used to go dancing with some of them we used to go yeah. you know play games in the house so you know what i'm saying we do stuff together and stuff like that um since i transferred it's a little harder because a lot of our schedules are not the same anymore and everybody is in there either getting married having kids now because they're moving on to the next phase of their life but i always hit them up and say hey how you doing or try to grab you know whenever i can to see them um i would do that but um, we, we try to, you know, or at least to say, hey, what's up? Are you doing? Like Braylon, I, he always texts me and he screenshots and Bryce does the same thing. And he's like, look at this. Like mm -hmm. me and Bryce talk about nails a lot, like nail colors. <laughs> um, okay. And then, yeah. And then we just found out that we like a certain type of book too. So we're, we're like trying to start a book club and shit. So, nice. um, and that's Braylon, a, yeah. That's ironic because me and Jim talk about eyeshadow color all the time. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You just said it's, it's amazing. Our takes are crazy. Yeah, I was throw no. some teal on before, but he was like, "Nah, nah, don't overdo it." Right, no, and no. your skin tone and all that. We talk about these things. We're I mean, I'm, about... I'm not. We're not girly like that. We're just trying to see, you know, be a little bit okay. You know, like, well, well, me and him are. I mean, we talk I'm about done. fashion all the time. We do all the time. He posted a picture of his shoes he was wearing on Father's Day. I was like, dude, I got the exact same pair, and these aren't some Air Force Ones. These are like different but are they comfortable 
Yeah. They are. That's, that's I've, all that I've matters. Never, I've never that's seen anybody wearing them before. Listen, you. as long as they're comfortable, it don't matter. Yeah. All these spending $3,000, they, oh, this looks comfy. <laughs> they got some leopard print on them. Yeah, what's up what? with your legs, though? Really? <laughs> hey. Give me the recipe. I need legs like that. Hey, I used to be uh, 305 pounds, so my legs... Oh. My legs had to support my whole body for my whole life. So, That's yeah, the they were uh, yeah. nice and strong. That's funny. That's so funny. That is funny. Shout out to my boy, Braylon, for texting you. I was like, Braylon. He did. Takes he asked me. He did. He's like, See? yeah, say less, I got you. I was like, word. Yeah, he definitely texted me. I think I, I, I was, I don't know, I think I was like reading and I see the text. I'm like, duh. Like, why not? Why would I say no? <laughs> duh. But I, I made sure that it was you. I was like, is this him? Like, this is not a yeah. fake account, right? Because I, right. I, I just, I can't. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, dude never had these many problems back in the day. You know, like it was, it was yeah. simple. Now yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. he's this. I mean, and mind you, me and Bryce's eyelashes are not fake. Because somebody said that too, that we were waking, wearing <laughs> fake lashes. <laughs> I want to clear up anything that all these rumors me and Bryce don't have fake glasses, so we don't wear any of that, okay? No. I'm just saying. That's wait, going, in, wait. That, that's no, going wait. in the description. I'm telling you that right now. I'm Nobody's going to believe you if you don't you listen, throw the yeah. clocks in there. Listen, listen. It's, it's, don't be extra. I'm just saying. Y'all with these comments is crazy. Y'all confusing me with other people. Like, real, true, like, uh, fans from, like, back in the day are the best, man. Because they know us. Like, like back of their hand, man. They can speak for us and be like, "That's not her. She would never say that." Or no, she does it. And it's just so great to see our loyal fans. Sorry for the new fans, cool, but these loyal fans that we've had since day one yeah. are just precious to us. They really are. Because if you know us, and some people think I'm still like I'm not. I haven't been back. It's been a, a year since I've been back. Some people say I'm still pregnant, and I'm like. Guys, guys. Oh, I now now I have a bad attitude. Apparently now I have a bad attitude. That's well, just like the same. Hey, well, hey, let's hey, talk about hey, this for a second. Hey, you know hey. why they say that now, right? But true fans know that it's just my nature. <laughs> it's just you, right? It's just you. They don't get it. All these new people don't know. It, it, look, uh, look. I'm new to this too. I'm not even two years, maybe close to two years into this thing, mm -hmm. the show thing. Yeah. But I heard about the legend of Addie Perez walking oh, in. Oh, God. I hadn't <laughs> seen you until I got, you know, I watched the old show. Yeah. And uh, I saw a bunch of stuff from the old show. And then when it went away, you know, anyway, everybody's yeah. got their story. I come back. The chief says the show's coming here. I'm like, yeah, okay. And he's like, whatever. So I get on the show and then I start hearing this name. And then I watch it and I'm like, oh, okay. I don't, I don't remember seeing her on the old show, but you were there. And then you came back with a bad attitude, allegedly. Allegedly. That's what they said. I didn't say that. Didn't tell me what they said. Oh, no. It is. What, listen, I'm from the Bronx. I'm from New York. I'm a Puerto Rican. I mean, my husband's Dominican. I mean, let's just be for real, you know? Oh, like, here we go. Oh, boy. I, <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not nasty, but I'm not soft either. But I am no. a cool person. I'm, I'm very calm. I'm, you know, I, I don't have this big head or nothing. I'm very simple. I, I, like I said, I don't know why everybody was catching the drift. Listen, somebody was calling me Ghetto Barbie. That was the trend now. Ghetto Barbie. And yeah, I was like... That's because of the Barbie movie. That's that's a, that's, a, that's a homage to the movie, not you. Was Barbie a brunette? I thought Barbie was blonde. Barbie's like... <laughs> Barbie was anything now. Barbie's whatever uh, whatever look they want now. Well, you know what? I would take that as a badge of honor if they, so I had a nickname like that. I, I mean, I get the Silver Fox thing. You get the ghetto Barbie. Just run with it. You know, get a the, decal made. I think my first one was <laughs> was the bun. I was the bun originally. You the, yeah, so. you were the bun. That was a tight bun. People love the actually, bun. Actually, I'm, I'm actually sure. Everybody kept asking me, how do I get my bun the way it is? And everybody's been wondering there what it I is. Do. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> went so, tough, baby. And, I, and I literally bought it down, right, just for this. Because I'm like, I've never showed how I did my hair. I've always got, you know, oh, man, what do you do? What do you do? What is not? So I know my true military females and stuff like that. They know exactly what I've been using. Damn. And I know everybody's been wondering what's been in my head this whole time to make it so perfect. And this is literally the same one I've been using for years. 
Oh. Okay. This you, only is got, a, you only got this, one? So, um, I do wash this, so relax. Hello! <laughs> Wait, said anything? You said it. Like it. These <laughs> you act like any of your eyes. But this is literally a sock, right? This is a black tea sock yep. that I rolled up together, and the two. And as you can see, it's like a perfect circle. And this is what's been on my head, and with all this. That's it. Well, you there you go, everybody. Do. You finally get to see what I've been using in my head after seven years. Break, breaking news on OPO <laughs> recaps, folks. Two you socks. gotta see this. This is just going into the description. Two yeah, sock right? Addy to Daytona, and her eyelashes are real. It's going in the description. I'm telling you right now. Hey, you should Bryce, market that. I got us. I said, Bryce, if you're watching, I got us because I know we were pissed off about it. <laughs> As you should be. I mean, these people are they. OP Nation is a thing. They see everything. They do. They comment on everything. They have an opinion about everything. It's all. Well, it's, it's, I, I think at this point we should just enjoy what you're watching. And if you don't like what you're watching, you can always watch something else. And you are entitled to your opinion of how you feel about certain things. But you need to understand that a lot of us are still learning through all this as well. You know what I'm saying? Like when I started the previous, I was only on the job for three months before I got put on the show. I wow. just got an FTO three months and they were like, hey, and you know who who spoke to me and said, hey, you want to be on? Curtis. Oh, look at that. Hollywood. And Curtis, can, Curtis can vouch for me because Curtis is like, hey, we're going to um put you on something. I'm like, what? And I didn't know what it was. I had no idea what it entailed. I had no idea what it was going to get to. I don't watch shows like that. And when mm -hmm. it told me, I didn't think it was going to be this ma like this magazine. I didn't think right. it was going to be this big. And Man, what was that for? Showed up, and then that chase was one of them, and then the homeless situation was one of them, and it just, the chase, it just kept building yeah. up, and, but it was Curtis who actually convinced me and spoke to me in the room and was like, do you want to be on the show? Yeah, I'm like, so, and what's funny is that he actually sent me a video um, of the homeless guy that I was interacting around the same time, was it two days ago, he sent it to me. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, that's something. So, yeah, full circle. <laughs> Jim, what do you got? All right. So for all the females out there that want to go into the military or drill instructors or law enforcement, what do you have to say to them? Do it. If you're going to do it and you're thinking about it, just do it. But I'm going to tell you this, right? Because one thing with challenges is that females can't do anything. And I'm going to be honest, some, some, some things that we cannot do, right? And we need to be okay with that. Like some things you're not able to do. But don't go in there and try to think, I need to do this job because I'm a female. But you need to go in there and do what you got to do. If you can't meet the standards, if you can't get your ass up and run, if you can't do what you got to do and you can't own up to what you're supposed to do, then you need to take a step in. Okay? Yeah. Because what you're going to do is you're going to risk people's lives, risk your partner's lives. And if you can't react to the situation and get things done, you need to get the step in and move. Okay, mm. because we already have all these other females have stepped up to the game and proven their self to do this job or do any type of the military, uh, law enforcement, whatever job it is, to take the, the leap and do what you guys do and give it 120%. But if don't embarrass the rest of the females that's been working hard and trying to prove a point and put a place where women can do things and they're supposed to do and because it's just going to bring us down. Don't do that to us. If you know it's not for you, it's okay. I'd rather you know and accept the fact that you are not able to do this for whatever reason, emotionally, physically, whatever it is, and do something that you're able to do because you're probably an expert and way better in something else than what you're doing in law enforcement and military. Like, don't cry about it. Don't whine about it. Get your ass up and do it. That's it. You know, and you want to be like, oh, women, this. No, you can't. You have to earn that place. We can't just take it because we're supposed to. We're supposed to have this equality situation. That's not how it works. If you say you're going to do it, do what you got to do. So nobody can talk crap about you that you're not able to do or handle the situation on your own. You, you know, <sighs> what I'm, I'm not saying we're going to be the most, hunt, you know, strongest person in the world. You know, mm -hmm. just do what you're able to do. But if you know you're putting people in danger, you need to do something else. Maybe you're an expert at something else that you can help us with. But that's it. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. And just to piggyback off what she just said, we can't all be Bryce Hughes, okay? All right. She's strong. She's, she's fast. My, she's my she's my superhero. She's all, all of our superhero. Goodness gracious. She, she's her. a monster, man. She is. She is. She definitely oh. is. She is not one to mess with. I saw her um a video of her handling a situation of a female that 
um, put hands on another deputy and he handled that thing like a monster. It was, it was beautiful. I can't say exactly what happened. I'm gonna let her do that, but it was just, I wish it was on the show because she is so strong. She did what she got to do, handled the situation and took it down like with no problem, man. I, I loved it. I, of course. Yeah, nobody's questioning her ability. I can tell you that. No. Um, the, the, he's not on this show. Nope. Um, let me ask you this. Um, can you share, speaking of some of these other th things in the past, can you reshare a regret or a failure that in hindsight was a turning point for your career or your success? Um, if you so can't, I, you can't. Yeah, I know what it is. I, I, I think... I would always want to think there's some type of failure in what I do, but I feel like there's reasons behind it, like we mentioned before. I think it's a reason and guidance to redirect and accepting that. You know, like, you know, if I knew that I couldn't do something because that's the hit that I was taking, then I would took it as a sign to redirect and, and do stuff like that. And it's almost as if, um, right, the transition of me leaving, right? It was some things that... It, I needed to do, I needed to get done, and I took that as a sign for me to redirect, you know? And also with law enforcement, because um, military, because I got out, right? I did 12 years and I got out. And as much as it, it was constant battle of trying to progress in the military for um, other reasons, especially being a reservist, trying to progress in the active duty world. Um, and I, I ended my time because I wanted to be a mom. You know, and I wanted to be a full time. So I don't they think my failures, it sucks. And I went through it, but it was for a reason. Um, and I take it as a um, just progression. I, you know, it's hard to say what part. I never hated anything I've done in my life. I have enjoyed everything that I've done through the military, the law enforcement, and even my job now. Um, so I don't regret a lot of things that I've done where it's a failing point or anything like that. So. Except my first marriage. That's probably a failure, though. First marriage? <laughs> this is your second marriage? Say, say second, please. Second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying, you know, but for these law enforcement, you know, uh, sometimes it happens. Yeah. But, you know, it's neither here nor there. She actually slipped that right into the end, Jim, and then she just got quiet. She was just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, you things happen. Much. You're things too happen. much. What do you got for her, Jim? Uh, I think I got all my questions answered. You know, I don't want to keep up too much of your time, get back to being you're a fine. mom and getting your puppy from the vet. Yeah, he's fine. What kind of dog you got? So dogs. I have, yeah, I have two dogs and I just got this cat. My husband left for me. Um, I got a pit bull that's, a pit bull that's in me. He's about 10 year old right now. He's at the vet getting his dental clean and checking his legs because his legs are weak now. Okay. And then I have a thirteen Shiba, a thirteen year old Shiba Inu that has a bad attitude. I guess he replicates his owner. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait! What is a Shiba Inu? Uh, you know the fox dogs that have the curly tail. Uh, oh yeah. I was gonna say it's. Uh, I think it was a meme for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh yeah, yeah that orange thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah, that thing's adorable. <laughs> that little orange dog. Yeah, he's on here somewhere. Wait. Keep talking. I want, I want, keep talking. I want to share the screen. <laughs> this is the Shiba Inu. I did a quick little Google. Very search. popular in New York. So yeah, yeah that. <laughs> yeah, got a mean dog. That's awesome. He looks a lot different. He doesn't look exactly like this for some reason, but he, this is basically it right here. All right, let me. He's a little darker. I mean, it looks fluffy. I like it. Yeah, he's Where? not that fluffy. So let me ask you this question: If you call your dog in the room, wherever you are right now, will your dog come? Yeah. And you pick the dog up without getting yeah. bit and put the dog uh, on the screen. What, what? I want to get bit. Thanks. Yeah, we love the dogs. I told you. <laughs> Tango. She's oh, gone. Right no, he's literally waiting for me. That's right. Of course he Of course he is. Don't tell us your dog's name. Somebody's not going to go, oh my goodness. Sure Somebody's going to go, oh my God, he's so cute. He's, not, he's an old man now. Oh, how old is he? He's gonna be thirteen. He's a good boy. He's like, what the hell am I doing, mom? <laughs> Let me out of here, will you? <laughs> that was minding my business. Come piggy me up. 
And then Aww. I got the then I got the cat that I I think you'll like this one though. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Egyptian leopard, maybe? Yeah. No, I wish. Oh, those things are beautiful. My buddy's got one of those. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. Oh, nice. Oh, what's what's the kitty's name? He's uh, my husband named him Merlin. Merlin, like the wizard. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is how? his cat. Yeah. Oh, how cute! <laughs> what happened, Jim? I broke the microphone. Is that what happened? I was like, "Where is this dog?" I looked on the cameras, and she's not outside, laying in the grass like she usually is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Normally, the whistle will get her." And I'm like, yeah. "All right, something's wrong." So, I was like, "Maybe somebody left the door open or a gate open." She's underneath my feet. There, oh, she's like, she's man, looking you up. Know like, you, listen, you know you're getting old. You done. Under your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Addie. There you go. Oh, this? Look at you. Who this? Let's say hi. Oh, oh that breath. Me. That's hot breath. Oh. Be the dog. Ow. Go, 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 go. Oh, cool. Hey. What is that? Is that hi? It's a Belgian Malinois. Oh, okay. I couldn't yeah. see the reference. Wanna say hi? <laughs> there we go. Okay, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Girl. Get out. <laughs> Eddie, you play sports when you were in high school? See I did. Oh, uh, I, I should have, but our, our our high school... Now, mind you, I was in the Bronx, right? So our right. teams kept fighting so much with the other teams. So joining the soccer team was a bad idea. Mm. So I, I, if anybody... I went to JFK in the Bronx and... Yeah, that was no. That was not. I did uh, cross country, gymnastics, handball. Yeah. Handball. Yeah. yeah, bro. That's a yeah. New York thing. Somebody else said that to me the other day at work, and I was just like, handball. And they're like, what? And I'm like, handball, the blue ball. People don't know what handball. handball is. People do not know what handball is. I didn't is, know it was so. a team sport in yeah. high school. I played it yes. in South Florida, but a team sport in high yes. school? Yep, and all of all of New York had uh, in, had handball teams. And so we have the wall there. So if you don't know what mm -hmm. handball is, it's basically like racquetball, but you hit with your hand on the wall and you play in teams, right? So you're back and forth just like racquetball, but you're using your hand. So your hand is like super big, whatever, because you're smacking shit out of it with your hand and stuff like that. So, um, <laughs> so I actually did that I think for three or three about three years, I think or four years, one of those, the whole, the whole team. So nice. it was, yeah. I didn't. I wanted to do soccer, but the team was all weird. I'm not a fan of basketball. I'm not a big fan of softball. Um, so I was like, I like running. I like cross country running. So I did that for a very long time. Um, Handball, it was just cool at the time. The team wasn't crazy. Um, and gymnastics was great, but uh, I, it was, it took a lot. We didn't have like the best coach and stuff like that to, or facilities to be able to do like the Olympic type of gymnastics, you know, we were kind of ghetto, so, right. you know. Right, hmm, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So the people know a little bit more about you. We don't keep the best stuff secret, but uh, when are you back on the show? um it's not up to you is it no well i i i try to do it once or twice a month if my schedule allows it mm -hmm. so i have to make sure that my son is taken care of for me to do the show so if my parents are available and they can watch him then i can let them know i can do that day so that's why i'm not on as often but i shouldn't be on because i want to give everybody the opportunity to be on um i've had my time is how i say it like i had my time so I don't want to take the opportunity for others to progress and show the world what they can do. So I try to do it once a month and maybe twice if available. Yeah, they're so. infusing some new blood into the show uh, in Richland County, huh? Yeah, you know, some people are made to do it, some are not. Um, so you'll see. Some people just can. have the look. You, you know, just some people can do it, some they not. So they make their decisions on how they do that. Um, yeah. That's up to the sheriff and everybody else along with him to be able to make the decisions of who goes on and who doesn't absolutely so, so to be determined is what you're saying yeah because i haven't put a schedule out so i'm not sure yet mm. hopefully next month if not august we'll see make them wait addy and make them wait they, Listen, you're, worth, yeah, you're worth the wait i i had i i did my time you know let, let everybody else like, Everything is my time. They want to see you. They want to see that bun. They want to say, hey, let me ask you this question. This may be too personal. 
Your ex photo, your profile picture, was that a picture from the studio? Was that professionally done or was that from the sheriff's office? Which photo? Your actual uh-huh. profile picture on X. You don't remember on Twitter? Oh, oh, that. Oh, yeah. So that was a uh, campaign that we did for diabetes. It was a commercial that I had to do um, with Donnie Campbell at the time and another uh, person on the cat team. We all had to do a skit for what the diabetes and stuff like that for awareness. Um, and so they took photo of us, uh, photos of us and we also did videos so they, they could put it on the commercial. It's actually, I think there's a YouTube of me doing it out there. Um, just, do, you know, just situation awareness of, of diabetes. And that photo was from that one, which is the photo that I love because I don't like my department photo. I need to take another one um, because there's makeup done and good lighting. So it was just a good photo. But that's the photo that I used. Nice. I'm asking a lot of questions, but I, I'm fine. I'm fine got, with it. I got a peek behind the curtain. You got 123,000 followers on X. <laughs> I have less than 10,000. Can you just send some over to me, please? Listen, you yeah, can take least. them all. You can take, <laughs> listen, that, that's what, seven years of, of Twitter building. and X and building. Yeah, yeah, um, I mean, I don't really use the platform like that to, you, you know, like other, I really don't. Right. Um, no, you're right. I see. I noticed that. Yeah, I don't use the platform um, unless it's helping uh, a friend to show like um, like rental. Yeah, like he, what is a real estate agent? I'll also guess that or more representation of our fallen. I right. do post a lot of our fallen because we should remember those who we lost. Um, I do represent those or canines that we can, and of course, who's on the show and stuff like that. I used to post a lot while the show was playing, and I used to tweet a lot. Um, but life got complicated and busy, so I wasn't able to watch as often as I usually do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want to take away a time from the family just glued to the TV um, right. at the time. So respectfully. You're right. You're, you're, you're all about it. Two more questions and I'm done. I'm going to leave you alone. I'm okay. So I'm you're okay. Get your dog. So do I know. Those... I he likes that. It's all good. I know. All right, so here's the final question I'm going to ask Master Deputy Addy Perez. I'm not going to tell you guys her real name because I know it now, but I'm not going to tell you guys. It's <laughs> Me super, don't. It's between us, our that. inner circle. Don't worry about it. It's okay. I would never tell. I never tell Bryce's real name. Yeah. See, kept it a secret. All right, if you could send a message to yourself from 10 years ago, what would you say and why? Oh, man, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, don't get married. Is one of them. The first time. The first time. Yeah. Don't yeah. get married. Go on active duty. Um, uh, that's probably the two that always runs in my mind is don't get married and then go active duty because I probably would have retired by now. It's two of the things. Uh, but everything's happened for a reason. Um, I am not guilty for the things that happened to me. I think I blame myself a lot. Wow. And I, I think for a long time, I did blame myself that, you know, I was always at fault trying to help and everything like that. And I think I finally accepted that I'm okay. And it wasn't always my fault. It was some things that were out of my control um, because you're trying to be a best person to whatever the situation is. And, um, but it, that it's okay. You know? Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm going to say this on behalf of all of us here, my wife is, isn't here to speak. I don't think his wife's there to speak. We we, we cut away to make this interview happen. Yep. Uh, we want to <laughs> thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody's favorite master deputy in Richland <laughs> County, right? The yeah, people's see, champ. That's so crazy. <laughs> the bun. Don't call our ghetto Barbie. Master Deputy <laughs> Addy Perez, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Twenty-four, that you out there, and twenty-four, that you out there, also.